Hello friends, uh, welcome to this uh, special episode. We're going to discuss uh, sectoral themes. If you go to Google and try to find, you know, the best sectors to invest in, best sectoral mutual funds, you'll find that a lot of traffic is there wanting to, you know, get this right. So, you know, give me one sector for my long-term investment goals or give me, tell me which sectors have done well, I want to invest there. That is the typical query that is there. And it is because of this recency bias that most investors have that the producers of such products, namely sectoral mutual funds, sectoral ETFs, uh, any instrument, any uh, product which is very specific to any one sector, these have proliferated like anything. I think in the last numbers that were there from the uh, MFI uh, uh, Association, it showed that a significant amount of uh, flows are going towards individual sector funds. They are not going towards multi cap, they are not going towards large cap, they are not going towards small cap as much as they are going to individual sector funds, thematic funds. Now, there is a uh, conceptual problem when you sell these sectoral funds to investors who believe that the sector that has done well so far will continue to do so. So what you are selling is basically a, a dream that, you know, this has done well and hence this will do well in the future also, which may or may not uh, happen as you may rightly uh, think. So sellers will sell products which sell the most. You can't blame them also. I mean, they are in the business of selling. Uh, from a moral perspective, you can say that, you know, they should not be pushing this. But uh, from a business perspective, uh, you know, they are pushing whatever sells. And they offer humongous margins on these types of funds versus the regular hybrids or uh, you know regular multi-cap kind of funds so the so the incentive structure also is such that sectoral funds get sold easily i mean yeah just yesterday i was at the bank and i was just overhearing the next counter and the lady was selling you know sectoral funds like anything see ma'am this last one year performance of this sector, this is the rising sector, so on, so on, blah, blah, blah. So obviously, uh, uh, you know, innocent retail investors, I, I don't like to use this word innocent, but there are some innocent investors. And yesterday's case was one young investor, maybe like uh, late 20s, and that lady was very influenced by that speech that, uh, you know, how fantastic that one sector has done. Uh, anyhow, so, so these are the sort of issues that are there in the market, and we will see now which sectors have managed to beat over the long term. So let's first see over a very long term what sectors have done well. So my data on this is available, I think, from 2000. Actually, data is available for the last 25 years, but some sectoral data uh, NSC is providing only for the last 20 odd years or so. So anyhow, so we will go through all of these. So private banks versus Nifty, 2% CAGR on private banks, the orange line. 13.6% CAGR on Nifty for the last 19 years. Fantastic performance by this sector. IT stocks, I have data from 1996, 29 years duration. 23% CAGR on IT versus 12% on Nifty. Fantastic returns again, no, no problem here. PSU banks, since 21 years, 9.8% on PSU banks. 13.2% on Nifty. Infrastructure stocks, last 21 years, 11% infrastructure CAGR on Nifty. Pharma, 13.9 versus 13.3 on Nifty over 23 and a half years. Auto, 16.8% versus 13.2 over 21 years. FMCG, 15.5 versus 12.1 over 29 years. Media, 4.05% versus 12.5 over 19 years. MNC companies, there is a segment uh, a sector that is defined at, uh, at the NSC. MNC stocks, 12.18% versus 10.7 over 29 years. 
energy sector 17.2% uh, versus 13.3 over 23.5 years. Energy stocks did well. Commodities 11.3 versus 13.2. So not so well. Real estate zero in the last 18 years versus 10.7 over 18 years. Public sector enterprise stocks, despite whatever has been the rally, 8.4% versus 10.7 over 30 years. So these sectors that we have just seen were either outperforming Nifty or they were underperforming Nifty. So private banks, IT, MNC, Energy, Pharma, Auto, FMCG have outperformed in whatever time period was available for that data. And media, commodities, real estate, public sector enterprise, infra, PSU banks have underperformed. So this is what the past performance tells us. And this can be used for you know, uh, influencing somebody. But can you really, you know, say that this these stocks that have not outperformed the Nifty over this long can be ignored? So can you ignore PSU banks? Can you inf ignore infra stocks? Can you ignore public sector enterprise stocks? Can you ignore real estate? So media, for instance, June 12 to January 2018, this period saw media go up by 215% when Nifty was up only 117%. So there was massive outperformance during that six five and a half year period commodities had a massive outperformance of 316 percent versus 196 percent in four years going from april 20 to july 24. real estate in the last one and a quarter year are up 168 percent versus nifty at 41 percent so massive outperformance during this small period of 1.2 two years public sector enterprise stocks also massive outperformance fund 157 percent versus 42% over 1.2 years. So this shows that there are periods of outperformance by sectors that were in, a, in the long term not performing so well, but there were specific periods where these uh, sectors really, really did well. So you cannot really ignore them, right? But on the other hand, the ones that we had outperforming over long term, private banks, IT, MNC, energy, pharma, auto, FMCG, can you just blindly go and buy sectoral funds on these out, very long term outperformers? So for instance, pharma, four years, Feb 16 to Jan 20, pharma was down 25% while Nifty was up 75%. What a bad miss if you were just in pharma in those four years. IT stocks, 0% return in the last uh, in, 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 in the last two and a half years from January 22 to Jan July 2024, while Nifty moved up 33%. Uh, IT stocks again, February 2000 to April 2003, down 86%, while Nifty moved down 38.5%. Very, very important to see that even when benchmarks are coming down, how fast is their, your sector coming down by? Would it be you know, okay to trust only one sector for your investment goal or have concentrated bets in specific sectors, especially when they are sold to you after huge runs, right? So, for instance, you can see, let's say, let's take private banks, and this data is the last 17 years data. You can see there are years when private banks do very well, there are years when they don't do well, and then there are years when you know they they are just neither here nor there. Pharma stocks did very well in 2008, uh, then did very well in 2020, but other than that, no real big outperformance did poorly in 2007 and 2017. Let's go to something else, auto stocks. Very well in 2009, not so good, some, somewhat good in 2014, somewhat good in 2023. Poor years, 2018-19. Now let's go to, uh, let's say public sector enterprise stocks. Very poor in 10 to 13, very poor 17 to 20, but excellent in 23, 24 and 2007. Okay, so infra stocks. Entire decade of poor performance going from more than decade, 2008 till 2020, no performance whatsoever except one minor plus year. So 2007 and you are seeing some decent ones in 2023 now. So had you bought infra after uh, when you were sold that, you know, infra stocks are the ones to go for, you would have spent the entire next 15 years and not reached the same capital where you were at, right? PSU banks sporadic uh, up, up shoots up down up down up down four years down one year up one really good year then normal extremely uh, choppiness in 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 uh, returns 
real estate one year up four years down one year up four years down one year up alternate year up down then two good years so this is the kind of you know un, uh, sort of inconsistent behavior of any sector so no sector is going to be beating the benchmark on a consistent basis you can have that rule written down that you know there will be no sector that will always beat the benchmark it will either outperform or underperform some good sectors may outperform more some bad sectors may underperform more so very difficult to predict the sectoral cycle so what is the solution you follow prices and allow the prices to determine whether you know you want to be in that sector or not so bhav bhagwan the bbc principle if the sector is telling you that you need to be in it be in it if the sector is telling you you need to be out of it be out of it and follow strategies where the sectoral rotation will automatically happen so instead for instance if stocks of auto start to do well automatically your strategy will start to have stocks of that sector if uh, banks start start to do badly automatically your strategy should be shedding banks from your strategy that is the best solution to this all so for example autos did reasonably well from 2009 till 2007 in terms of not having a a down year at least and most likely uh, you would have had you know this great year and post this great year you would have been approached by your bank's rm uh, that uh, or, or your mutual fund distributor that autos are the future let's buy autos uh, you know for for uh, for the future so even if you did not pick it here where the you know the 2009 boom started uh, from here but there was no harm in entering later also because it carried on for a long period of time which most sectors would not have done so uh, you know you need to exit then also swiftly in case that sector is not performing so post 2017 you would have wanted to get out of autos because 2018 till 2022 autos did nothing in fact at one point of time autos were down 60 percent from 2018 to 21 and while autos did nothing in this uh, four-year period uh, nifty was up 78 percent so even if you had you know come out of autos in 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 some time realizing that the sector is going out and moved into nifty you would have made much much more money had you moved into a sector that was performing during this period you would have in fact made even more money so it's a tactical allocation to move out of sectors that are not performing and to move into sectors that are performing so buy and hold into sectors that have recently performed is no guarantee that you know after five years you will be able to match even nifty returns so sectoral uh, thematic funds thematic etfs small cases all these have this issue that they are like horse blinders that i am only going to look at this sector energy or i'm going to look at you know uh, renewable energy or evs or this or that or some green orientation uh, it may not happen that uh, you know while that industry may keep growing but it may get discounted in the first year and then it may just go flat and you may be sold that product after that one year you know it is already discounted the next four years or it or that industry may start to collapse and because you are invested in that particular theme only how will you decide when to get out that is remains the biggest question out there so do let me know what are your thoughts about going into concentrated thematic investing uh, in case you have done it successfully uh, share with us what are your strategies on that uh, my suggestion on this is always don't be fixated about any particular sector you don't know which is that one sector that is going to be the you know the blue eyed boy of your portfolio for the next two years for instance two years back most of our strategies moved into public sector enterprise stocks railway stocks some public sector banks where nobody was talking about them you know nobody was touching uh, bhel bel all these companies with a barge pole at that point of time but because the momentum was there the sector was showing momentum although you know fundamentally you may not have agreed with it but they still continue to rule the roost stocks have made 200 300 400 percent returns but the point is that the market is telling you a story and you are you should be open to listen to it I mean, the sector is presenting itself that please come and buy me and, and you are saying no because you were a poor performer in the past hence i'm not buying you that is your ego telling you that you know you're not willing to listen to the market thank you so much i'll see you in the next one bye